Custom types are great for being able to decide like what shapes our program uh, or the values in our program should be. Um, but type variables make things a little bit more flexible so that we can create one custom type and reuse it uh, for a whole bunch of stuff. So let's uh, get into some specifics uh, here. Uh, let's just start by talking about what is already existing in the core Elm language. So before when we did uh, 1.5, you know, you know, 2, 3, whatever, uh, this is creating a list of floats. So what we're seeing here to the, uh, the right of this colon here is that we have a list and there are a list of floats. Uh, so we might be used to that in JavaScript. Uh, the notion of having a list of things or an array of things. Here we have the same type list, uh, but this time around, um, it's a list of strings. So there's this notion that a list can be used for multiple different types of values. We can even have a list uh, of lists of strings. <laughs> so I'm going to hit enter here. So we can have lists inside lists. And what you're noticing is that the type here, uh, uh, it's always the word list, and then it's followed by what goes inside the list. Um, so with custom types, we can do uh, the exact same thing. I'm going to hop over to main.elm, and I'm just going to clear this out. And what we're going to do is we're going to make a custom type um, called response. And response, uh, let's say we make a web request and we ask for some data from a server. Um, our response can either be loading or it can be successful in which case, um, uh, let's say we get like a list of emails back, a list of strings here. Uh, I'm gonna use a record for this email. So in the success case, uh, maybe we went and we said, hey, give me all the, the emails for my uh, uh, you know, contact list or something like that. Uh, we go ask the server for that. Um, and then if there's a failure, maybe we have like the reason for the problem. Uh, this is a valid, um, custom type in Elm. So if I import main, um, and this is me just using Elm REPL again in the terminal, if I import that, what I should be able to do is say main.loading. That gives me a response type. I should be able to say main.success. And success needs uh, that record with the email field to become a response. So if we say main.success, uh, Oops, it looks like I, I called email instead of emails. Let me fix that real quick. And I'm just going to re-import this. Um, so import that. And then main.success, it takes in that record. So emails might be ryan at elm.land. So now I've got um, something that's a response here. Um, and it's just using main because it's prefixing it here. If I wanted to get rid of that, um, Prefix in the annotation, uh, I, could, I could do it like this. And what you're seeing is success, emails is response, and then I could have a failure, the reason, which is, you know, you're offline, which might happen if you're making a, a web request, right? So uh, these are the kind of three possible options, success, failure, and loading. Those are the three types of responses we have. Uh, but when you're making a web application, you might um, be asking for different information in different places. So this is like a response uh, of emails, but maybe you want the exact same thing for a different part of your code uh, that doesn't care about emails. Maybe uh, you want to know, um, you want a response of users where you have, you know, users and then a user has, you know, uh, a name uh, <laughs> and then, I don't know, maybe uh, a name and it has like an age. So, uh, what you have here is uh, loading success and failure. We can't reuse these. So this is going to be like, I guess we're just going to like do this or something. Uh, this is kind of confusing. So we don't want to, uh, we can't have, you know, duplicates because otherwise loading would be ambiguous. So Elm's, Elm was giving us an error saying, all right, what does loading give me? A responsive user or responsive emails? So. Well, you see that what I'm writing here is starting to get a little bit cumbersome. Loading of emails gives me a response of emails, but loading of user is giving me a response of, of user. I'm not sure exactly what that error says. Whoop, whoop. And back to normal. Um, but what we can do uh, with types, with custom types in Elm, is we can use type variables. So what is different between uh, these two? Back when we had 
you know, uh, this shape for each of our things. It's really just the data that we care about that we want to be uh, more general. So I'm going to do control back tick to hide this. And let's uh, start by using our first type variable data. So here I'm saying I'm declaring a type. Uh, it's called response. And the thing that's going to be uh, a variable is going to be this lowercase data property. And what's cool about that is I can create a data type, um, just like list of string or list of in, I can have a response of emails or I can have a response of users, that kind of thing. So instead of doing things like this, uh, what we're left with is a single data type that allows us to use loading, success, and failure. And we don't need, I'm just gonna put this in comments. We haven't actually covered comments yet in the video. Uh, Multi-line comments in Elm uh, look like this. Uh, and then single line comments like this. So those are comments, by the way. Surprise, <laughs> we're in unit two and we haven't talked about comments. Um, so instead of having duplicates uh, for response and having two different types and uh, you know repeating ourselves a bunch, we can just create one response data type and then we can use that in our terminal. So I'm gonna uh, move this up here and then I'm gonna bring back uh, that terminal that we had. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna import main again. And now when we say loading, we get a response with this lowercase d data. Um, and when we say failure, and the reason is uh, you're offline, we're getting a response with a lowercase data. But when we say success and we give it an, uh, let's give it a string like hello, um, we're getting a response that holds on to a string value. Uh, we can also say uh, we're going to get a response that holds on to a list of strings. So what you'll see is we just created our own custom type that's able to work for any shape data that we give it. So response of data uh, is saying the data part is flexible and we're just going to take whatever that type is and we're going to use it in the annotation. So just like we saw with lists, uh, when we have a list of Booleans, Oops, <laughs> sorry, I said the word out loud, so I confused myself. Um, we have a list of Booleans here, list of bool. Uh, we could have a list of strings. Um, that's when we know, like the type has to be bool, right? Because there, you know, there's a Boolean here that list has to be of type string. Um, so there's going to be double quotes. Whenever it's ambiguous, uh, list is going to keep that lowercase variable. So this empty list could potentially uh, be a list of numbers or a list of strings, list of booleans. We don't know because we didn't give it any items. So because it's still flexible, you're going to see we have this lowercase uh, uh, type annotation variable. Every time we use a type in Elm, we're going to have a capital letter. And anytime we have a type variable, we're going to see a lowercase letter there. So that's how you know that something is uh, flexible is if it's that lowercase. Elm is really consistent that way. Um, we could even parameterize this and say like, you know, maybe like the error uh, type uh, is also flexible. So uh, for example, uh, if I reimport uh, our main module here, uh, now when I use loading, it's got a flexible data type, a flexible error type. If I say failure, uh, huh? Uh, what it's going to do is it's going to say, well, the data type is still flexible, but because you gave me a string uh, here, I know that error has to also be a string. Um, so as we uh, provide specific values here, we're going to constrain uh, what kind of uh, concrete uh, types we're using here. Uh, I'm not going to do this error type. I think it's a little confusing uh, for now. So we're just going to leave this as is and go back to uh, what we had before, which is just one type variable. Um, so that's type variables at a high level. Um, you can add as many as you want, um, but in practice, I try to be as concrete as possible. I try not to add too many. Uh, you can see, you know, over time, this gets really confusing and the error messages get just kind of wild. Uh, <laughs> so let's see, like if I had data and then BC, you know, DEF, that's valid. Uh, and then when you're reading like error messages and stuff, you're gonna get a bunch of, you know, garbage at the end. So if you make things really flexible, um, you know, you can get as much code reuse as possible, uh, but generally um, you'll see in the core data structures like list, um, uh, you're not going to see too many type variables because it does come at a cost of kind of like readability. Um, yeah.
And so uh, that's an introduction to type variables. Uh, we're gonna uh, talk about using these types in our code to get better Elm error messages um, in the next section when we cover annotations. Uh, so I'll see you then.